Banks are very powerful. That's the money that we've been using, BDC, bank digital currency. That's what we should really call it because the central planners have done another marketing trick. They're saying, oh, there's something new here, CBDC, yeah. central bank digital currency, brand new. Uh, no, we've been using digital currency for a long time, as soon as we had anything digital. Um, so for quite a few decades, and in terms of accounting, already for you know, two and a half centuries, uh, this, the bank created money is quite old. CBDC is just an attempt by the central planners to drive the banks out of business. This uh, decentralized financial system, of course the central planners don't like, so their, their alternative is to have something centralized. And they're saying, and of course they're also bank regulators, it's the bank regulators saying, we're, we're the umpire, but we're not gonna join the game. We're not gonna offer current accounts to the general public, retail CBDCs, which will kill the banking system. Fortunately, there's been enough resistance against this, so the latest is just maybe one, one and a half months old, that, and, and of course Europe has been a driving force here, ECB, Bank of England in particular, they've come out now and they've said, and it's still not official, but it's clear that they're leaking this to particular journalists that write this up in the FT and so on. So they're actually abandoning now this idea of having um, immediately retail CBDC. They're gonna have the Chinese model. Of course, they haven't mentioned China. They don't admit that they're copying this from China, but China, the Chinese model is to have wholesale CBDC, um, which is another way of saying, you know, China is saying we're not gonna kill the banks. China had the Soviet model until Deng Xiaoping came to power in 1978. Uh, that means Gos Bank, one bank, one central bank. That's the Soviet model, very centralized. Central planners love it, but it didn't work, didn't perform. And Deng Xiaoping was a very pragmatic guy and he decided, well, we need to deliver. Japan was doing very well. He traveled over to Japan. Uh, he drank enough motai and sake with the Japanese to find out because that's how you get the truth very quickly in Japan. Uh, what was happening, oh, the secret of this high growth, double digit economic growth for several decades is the banking system consisting of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of small local banks creating a lot of money. And so he went back and of course since 78, therefore China created thousands of banks, thousands of banks, local banks, community banks, savings banks, credit unions, regional banks, provincial banks, also some national champions, but the bulk is, is these smaller local banks. And now in this world that we are, I think the Chinese, is, it's just too recent. You know, it's, that's how they became successful. Should they really not abolish their banks by having retail CBDC, which will kill the banking system? No, so the People's Bank of China introduced this uh, wholesale CBDC, which means it's only via the banks. You hold an account with the bank, and that's how you acquire your central bank digital currency. Uh, and therefore, because that limits um, the negative impact of this and limits the centralization, but it is, and I guess that's what I've decided in Europe, it's a way, you know, to get the foot in the door, because of course you can then um, step up your centralization as a next step if you want to, which is what we have to be very wary of.